Hey guys. What is up, everybody? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the Soul Singing Podcast. It's yeah, your boys. boys. See how I set that up for you? And then last time you tried yeah, it, you... Yeah, okay. So you are just bad at doing it. <laughs> no, you just said, hey, what's up? It's your boy. And then you looked at me like, why didn't you do it? And there was a reason why I didn't do it. And I got to fix your microphone because you don't stop playing with it. Hey, uh, what is up, everybody? Uh, it's been a while. It's been two weeks. Uh, a whole... That's what you get when you listen to a bi-weekly episode or podcast. Uh, you gotta wait two weeks for the next one. Anyway, uh, how have you What's been? What's happened since the last time? Uh, two weeks. What can happen in two weeks? Uh, I. You can have AIDS. I'm just gonna mute you and while you fix your mic because I. Yeah. Uh. You can. A lot can happen in two weeks. Honestly, I've started playing the lottery, and haven't won. Um. I'm g- when you're done making the noise with that, then I'm going to unmute you. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Listen, if you like our podcast, you can find us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We're on MySpace. We're on the YouTube, so you can watch us in. I don't know why our videos aren't uploading in high definition. I have a bone to pick with YouTube, uh, but it is. It's happening. It's there. Uh, hey, we did the f- same thing. It's we're like two peas in the can at the bottom after all the other ones go in out to the dish and they're stuck there. Anyway, Ooh, refried beans. <laughs> what about them? Sounds mad good. All right. Uh, hey, listen, this episode we are going to it's a little bit of a callback episode, if you would. Um, and we are going to do things differently. This might be a two-part episode. This might be a three-part episode. This might be a four-part episode. This episode might take us the rest of the year uh, if we really study all of the verses properly. Uh, but well, we're actually, probably not if, we, do if, we saw, if we go into each verse properly, it would probably be like the rest a few of, decades. Yeah, the rest of our least. podcast forever. <laughs> um. There's a lot of verses for this no, episode. I also think theoretically side ramp because uh, we're still in the intro. intro technically, yeah. um, I think we say that we're gonna do things a little bit differently every <laughs> single episode. I think for I think the past like four maybe five episodes we've been like so we're gonna do things a little differently. So at what point is this just the way we do things? <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> we just always do things. To, we are the So I Was Thinking podcast full of innovation. So today, guys, we're actually going to be doing the same exact thing that we've been doing this whole time. Um, <laughs> Which is doing things differently. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's tough, but uh, that'll make a great show. Curveballs. going to make some merch that's going to say, uh, today we're going to do something something the exact same way. It, because we do things differently every day. That's a long T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a front and back. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so listen, a few months. Let's go with months. A few months ago, we did an episode called "Can Can I Know God?" Knowing God, something like that, and basically we wanted to answer the question. Somebody asked us in our in- inbox. On our DMs, if you would. Uh, can you really know God? Maybe nobody asks us. Maybe that's an idea that we came <laughs> up with ourselves. But uh, if you do want to ask us something, DM us, website. All the time. The hey, no. Yeah. Uh, also, um, are you about just, to go to another I'm side just, rant? Because no, no, I was about no, no. to enter the episode. No, uh, real quick, because this is kind of what we were talking about. Um, no, this is definitely a side rant. <laughs> uh, but... Um, I was just thinking, uh, all right, we were talking today about how I've, I don't think I've ever checked the, uh, so I was thinking email and Felipe said, I know. So if you do, if you email us, which I think you can through the website, uh, address it to Felipe. You don't have to address it to me. <laughs> I just check it. You know, the, the interesting thing is we both have it on our phones and we can both access it at any time. But I got you. Yeah. If you answer, if you ask us a question, I got you. Rowan might respond later, maybe. Who knows? 
Uh, anyway, but anyway, I don't know why I brought that up, but yeah. So we uh, we had this uh, you know episode come out. Can I really know God? And short answer is yes, right? Because God wants to be known. God desires to be known. But really, now we're gonna do an in depth look at that because I think it's important that we understand and we touched on it during this episode that it's important that we know God and we know God rightly. Right. Um, and so this is going to be an episode kind of on theology. So uh, we can look at theology in one of two ways. Theology being, number one, the overall umbrella of all of the things Christianity. Right. So like it encompasses things like pneumatology, which is the study of the or like the theology behind the Holy Spirit or ecclesiology, which is theology behind the church. Soteriology, which is the you know, theology and the doctrine of salvation, Christology, which is the the theology of Jesus, right? Or Scientology. I'm kidding. Scientology that is was a, a good cult. One. That was a good that one. That was a good one. Yeah, I set it up perfectly. Anyway, so we have theology as the overall umbrella, but then we also have theology as the study of God the Father specifically, right? So we have mm-hmm. pneumatology, Holy Spirit, uh, Christology, Jesus, uh, or God the Son, and then we have theology god the father and they are all individual they are all god they are all one but they reveal themselves in three persons we're actually going to touch on this i had to do some research for us last night because um actually i did a lot of research for this episode and i'm excited for it but here we are when we study theology and why it's important is we are uh, trying to understand and we are dealing with God's self-revelation and God's relationship with humanity. Those are the two important things that we need to have in our in our minds as we get into this episode. There's a few more. I, I hate when I do that. Like I read our notes and then I say something. That's just something that I'm going to say later. And then I say it wrong. You yeah, did it again, I didn't feel it. you? Nah, it, it just did this on its own this time. Yeah, you got to stop. No, 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 I can fix it. You just go on with it. Okay. I'm going to mute you again so that you can make your ruckus over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, if, I, if I need to say something, I'll just unmute myself. Okay. Myself. All right. So, uh, so we are dealing with God's self-revelation and God's relationship with humanity. Um, as we dive into this episode, we need to understand a few truths and, uh, you know, like, especially as we're going to, this is going to be like a multi-part episode. There's a few things that I want us to keep at the forefront of our minds as we do a deep dive on God. Uh, right. And so number one, we need to understand that God is infinite and we are finite. Um, so there is going to be a lot that we cannot absolutely comprehend or understand about God simply because we are limited people. We are limited creation. And so even though God reveals a lot of who he is, there's a lot that we will not know, we will not understand simply because of the d- dynamics of who we are in relationship with God and right? who we are as creation. God is infinite and we are finite. We are limited. Yeah, I think that's cool. Okay, good. I thought I was muted for a second. Um, I think that's cool because I think, and I, um, ironically, well, maybe it's not irony. It's the wrong word. But this was uh, kind of the whole basis of our very first episode. Um, it's just like there should be some humility that comes with like knowing that God is infinite and we are finite. Right. And I'll get into this a little later when we start talking about other things, but just like as a setup, I think it's really important, especially like when we address the issue of like addressing God, like prayer almost. Right. Cause I think, uh, at God being an infinite being, right. He should demand our utmost respect. And a lot of the times I don't think we give that to him. Right. We like make excuses on why not to pray. We don't read our Bibles. Right. And then when we do pray, we feel the need to use like, even like, I used to think, Oh, like when you're mad at God, it's okay to use explicit language because like, it's like, he's your friend. It's almost like, no, just because you're frustrated doesn't give you the right to like swear at God. Come at me. Um, but like, <laughs> like I think there should be so much respect for God because he's infinite and we're only finite. And yet he still 
allows there to be a relationship. Like, I think we take it for granted that there's a relationship to begin with, right? And w- we use it so flippantly. I think, uh, like, it's really important when we're talking about the attributes of God, some of these, like, greater attributes that, like, we can never attain, like being infinite, um, I think we need to put need to put some respect on God's name. Uh, as the... <laughs> As the um, my favorite artist, uh, John Bellion, once said, if I knew his plans, he wouldn't be God. And that's what started the first episode and started this podcast. Yeah. Shout out John Bellion. Come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, it could work. Um, number two, we need to understand that whatever we know about God must be revealed by him and him alone. Um I'm going to pause there because we don't get to like, I've seen a lot of weird people um, say things and do things and, and put out books and it's like new revelations of God. And like, you know, like they have all of these different things. Like I'm going to go on a bit of a rant. There was a, uh, there was a thing that I saw recently and, or it wasn't recent. It was like right after the last election and Rowan knows what I'm talking about, but there was this essay or this book and it was like, It was talking about the prophecies of Trump being, I don't know. It just got weird, right? And then they were basing it, all of these prophecies off of a book that this random person in Europe wrote that they had a new revelation from God. And it's like, well, no. And if you look at the history of this book, this person had no prior relationship with Jesus. It was not based on anything biblical. It was based on somebody just writing a book. Anyway. Be careful about what you filter because God has already revealed himself and what we know about God must come from him. You know, like same thing we said in our other episode, I can't make up details about Rowan and expect it to be true, right? Like that's not how relationship works. I know things about Rowan because Rowan tells me, Rowan informs me. So Rowan's favorite color at one point was red. It's now purple. No, Uh, it was actually, it was red for the longest time. Sorry, continue. Yeah, lion. Anyway, uh, right. So then we have we have uh, you know, like I get to know that about Rowan because Rowan shared that with me. God, on so much more of a larger scale, has revealed things about Himself, and as God, He has the right to reveal as much as He wants to, um, and He does. God reveals Himself as He sees the need to reveal Himself. God doesn't go around giving people extras, or God doesn't need to tell us everything about His infinite beingness he just tells us what we need to know yeah and it's also like we don't discover thing we don't discover more about god like it's not our own skill and our own knowledge that discovers more about god it's always stuff that's always been there always been revealed to us that we learn about you know like i think that's important because i think it's dangerous like i discovered this new uh prophecy from god or i discovered like this new attribute of god or whatever and it's just like that's vain and stupid yeah agree and lastly the third thing i want us to keep uh, in our minds as we dive deep into this conversation is while we can't know god exhaustively meaning you know like um know every single yeah. little detail about God and what, how long his fingernails are and what shoe size he wears and all that stuff. While we can't know God exhaustively, it doesn't mean that we can know him, that we can't know him truly. Mm. Right? So, so um, Colossians 1 verse 10, uh, Paul instructs us to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, right? That's so true. so uh, in, in order to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, we need to bear fruit in every good work and increase in our knowledge of God. So although, like I said, we can't know him exhaustively, meaning every single little detail, we can know him truly. That's good. And I think this is also a good opportunity to bring this up. Like, how are you guys... And I guess this is a question for us too. Like, how are we growing in our knowledge of God? If we're called to uh, bear fruit in every good work and increasing in our knowledge of God, how are we doing that? Like, what's our prayer life like? Like, how do, how are we reading our Bibles? Like, are we reading other things about, like, we're smarter people are teaching us? Like, what are we doing 
to increase our knowledge to God. And I would just challenge you guys to like go out and do stuff, read books, watch a movie about God. Maybe not the movie part, but you know what I'm saying. Back to you, Felipe. Actually, let's talk about something that we're doing here in the next few weeks and how people can get involved. Hey, everyone. So Ron and I have a really exciting opportunity that we want to share with you. In May, we are going May. down to Florida to vacation. Just kidding. <laughs> we're going to go down and we're, uh, we have the opportunity to support this really incredible ministry uh, called Heart of the Bride. Uh, they are doing a mud run in the middle of the panhandle. What? It's probably the biggest event of the year. It's going to be awesome. For Southern Alabama. Uh, and uh, uh, this race that we're going to help uh, volunteer at and run is to help raise money for this organization as they help support orphans throughout the world. Um, one of my good friends runs it. Ron and I are already training. Uh, we've been laying off the Twinkies uh, for the past two days. Uh, <laughs> the past two days. That's as, that's as far as we're going to go. It's true. <laughs> I've actually been laying off Tinkies for a while. Anyway, this is going to be a really long commercial. But I have uh, Mike Anderson here who actually helps run the thing. He's the guy that also builds most of the obstacles himself with his bare hands. Uh, Mike, can you tell us more about what we're doing and how actually our viewers can help be there and help you guys out even if they can't run the race with us? Yeah, so uh, first off, a little bit about um, the race. By the way, if you want to find out more, you can go to uh, emeraldcoastmudrun.com. So emeraldcoastmudrun.com, that will give you more information about the race. But essentially, uh, we offer a 10K competitive, a 5K uh, fun run, uh, a one-mile kids run, and uh, a night run where you run and work with a headlamp and we light up the course called Zero Dark Dirty. We have 18-plus obstacles, three mud pits, and uh, uh, we get muddy to do good. So 100% of the proceeds will go for uh, orphan and at-risk children around the world. Um, we're in five different countries. We can really only talk about four countries where we are su actively supporting orphans, about 500 orphans that we care for. But also, also locally here in the US, we do adoption aid grants for uh, uh, families looking to adopt because that can be very expensive. And then also right in our county here in, uh, in Florida, in Okaloosa County, we're heavily involved in the foster care uh, system through a uh, court uh, care portal. So anyway, so that's a little bit about it. Um, this is our 10th year putting on the mud. Uh, we will have thousands of runners. Um, last year we had close to, um, I think 300 registered runners, 400 volunteers. And last year we raised uh, almost $90,000. So wow. our goal this year is to try to get $90,000 um, uh, for orphans. Um, the organization that the, the Mud Run supports is called Heart of the Bride. A lot of times people think we're in the wedding business, but we're not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but if you find out more about Heart of the Bride, um, you can go to heartofthebride.org. That's heartofthebride.org. And you can find out more specifically uh, the countries that we're involved in. Uh, some are uh, uh, with orphanages that we have. Uh, some is schools. Uh, and then also uh, what we're, the work that we do locally, like more specifically. And there's other ways to get involved besides the mud run. The mud run was a quick practical way for us to, to take our reach and go wide into the community, right? So everybody can be a part of supporting uh, orphan care, right? Maybe you came on a, a mission trip or maybe you, you're not able to sponsor a, a child monthly and all that support, but you can say, hey, I'll get together uh, with some friends and challenge them and up for this this event uh, and, and have a blast doing it, but also helping us raise the money uh, for orphan care. So any other uh, questions you have specifically? Yes. Yeah, so because we, well, I know you well, there is one way that you can sign up, even if you're not able to do the race, even if you're not able, able to give. And it has to do with just swiping your debit card or credit card. Really quick, Mike, can you tell us about that? Yeah, so uh, we have lots of ways to get involved, but a very easy practical way is just donating your change. And uh, in our modern day today, very few actually carry change with them. 
so this is just our, our uh, an updated version. You can donate your change. If you um, text the word kids change, all one word, kids change to 26989. So text the word kids change to 26989. Uh, that will send you a link. And what you can do is you can register on this link and you essentially register uh, your debit card or a credit card. And one, it takes about five minutes to register it. It's secure. I've been doing it now for two years. Uh, you'll be able to round up your change. So uh, for example, uh, if you go to the grocery store and um, you go to buy groceries and it comes out to, um, I, I don't know, $59 and 85 cents, right? It's automatically going to round that up to $50 and it'll donate the 15 cents to Heart of the Bride. So it's really cool. You don't have to think twice. In fact, uh, it's actually easier for you to budget because every time you use your card, just round it up to that dollar. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I've got a, you know, down to the cent. It's like, no, you just round it up to the next. And you know that that change is getting donated to Heart of the Bride. It takes five minutes to set. It's secure. Um, you can also set a limit. So if you want to um, only donate for the $15 or $20, you can set your maximum donation to that $15 or $20. Every time you swipe your card, whether it's getting gas, uh, food, grocery, whatever it is, right? It'll round up as it hits that $15 or whatever that limit you set, it'll stop. And then it just kind of resets itself for the next month. So it's a great way um, for you to help orphans and at-risk children but you don't necessarily have it to sponsoring a child, which can be um, $50, you know, or even coming down and running the mud run, right, which may be difficult, but you're like, hey, yeah, I want to donate my change and uh, and help orphans in that risk. Man, we would love that, that, to have you uh, support us in that area. Again, it's the word kids change at 2689. Sweet. That's well, awesome. we are very excited to go down and run this race. Uh I need to start stretching now because the way my legs are set up, they're always tight. Uh, but <laughs> May 21st is race day. And until then, we are going to plug this on every episode so that you can help. I, it's not about us, really. We want to do the best that we can to help support this wonderful organization, all the work that we're doing. If you want to come race with us, you know, we're not buying tickets for anybody, but you can <laughs> meet us there. Uh, or you can, like, help uh organically wherever you're at just like mike said so you have multiple ways heart of the bride.org.com heart of the bride heart of the bride.org emerald mud emerald coast mud run.com and you can text kids change to 26989 2689 the words change 2689 i'll get it we'll have all of these things in the description as well sweet so you don't have to remember it All right, Mike, we'll see you down at the Mud Run, and I'll back to hey, the I episode. I can't wait to see you guys. Thanks for the support. Of course. All right, we're back. So uh, diving into this conversation, what can we know about God? This is honestly like a part one because there's so much to know. There's so much to talk about. Oh. Uh, First, I think we missed something. We're uh, The way this is going to work so God has, oh, nope, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> my bad, my bad. I got a little ahead of myself. I was getting nervous because I thought we missed something. We didn't. Whoop. No, here we are. <laughs> go Whoa. ahead, Felipe. All right, so um, there is a lot about how God has revealed himself, and we're going to go into the attributes of God because I think, you know, if anything this podcast can help you do is help you grow in your understanding of your faith and understanding of God and understanding of how you relate to God and all that stuff. And so that's why we're going to do this. So what can we know about God? Well, we can know about his essence, right? And, and what I mean by that is what God is, right? So the Holy Spirit is obviously a spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus, uh, you know, God, the son was the word made flesh. So he is flesh like you and I, like mm-hmm. me and Rowan, uh, maybe a little bit better than me and Rowan. I would, and then I would move the word maybe out of there, but better, you know, like, but flesh like us, we can see, we can touch, you know, people had dinner with him. Like he was flesh, but what is God, the father? Like, well, God is spirit and invisible. He is made of different stuff than material. And that's the explanation that we get. Yeah. Uh, and here's 
here's why that matters. John chapter four, Jesus is talking to the woman at the well and they're having this whole conversation and she makes a point to say, uh, you know, ask about where worship matters. And it's a really long way to get to this point. But Jesus says, hey, listen, soon the time is coming where it won't matter where you worship because God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Uh, and that's all we get. And we hold on to that because we believe Jesus's words and Jesus makes it a point to not try to paint us a picture of what God is like, right? Like he's not trying to answer every little question. It didn't show up in the gospels. We don't need to sit around and debate whether or not God has feathers, whether or not God is looks like Santa Claus, whether or not God looks like whatever. Mm -hmm. all, all we get is that God is spirit and invisible, and he's made of different stuff than you and I. That's good, uh, which moves on to the different things that we can know about God. We can know his attributes. And so this is what's going to take up at least most of the um, next few episodes that we're doing because these tend to fall into two categories. There's communicable yeah, Ooh. communicable uh, attributes, which are things that can be shared between us. So they're, uh, they're things that God has put into us, right, and that we can, like, reflect, right? And then there are his incommunicable attributes, which are things that only belong to God and that are completely unachievable by us. And so uh, this, this episode, we're going to be talking about his incommunicable um, attributes and then part two three four uh, on to 150 will be uh, about his communicable attributes I keep on tr my mind keeps on wanting to say incommunicable rights but that doesn't make sense I don't know why it's attributes not rights um so <laughs> Attribute one is his independence. He is self-existing and in himself completely satisfied in every way. The difference between God and creation is quanti qualitatively different. Quad qualitatively. Qualitatively. Quali oh, I missed the T. Qualitatively. Qualitatively. Yeah, I missed the T and the A. So God is independent. Um we don't know what that's like. Yeah. We will never be fully independent the way God is fully independent. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an attribute that only God has, right? And he created everything through him. Everything exists. He was there before everything. He holds everything together. God is self-existing. He does not need anything or anyone. He is, right? Um, yeah. And in himself, he is completely satisfied in every way, meaning without anything or anyone, God is whole. Yeah. Right. And I think that's interesting that God made us like qualitatively different. We are dependent people. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and it's interesting um, because like I, I don't know if I talked to Ron about this. But I've had this conversation before where somebody called me out, right? Like, um, when you, when you like hit your teenage years, your teenage years are usually marked by a longing for independence. Like you want to do your own thing. You want to get a job. You want to get a car. You want to do your thing. You don't want your parents to tell you what to do. Like you want to be independent, but like the next step of growth and the next step of maturity is really understanding like, yeah, you might want independence but what you need is interdependence you need to understand that like you need people that's how god made us we actually need god mm -hmm. like without him we are missing something in our lives god like can go on forever and ever without us and so much so that like right the psalmist says that in god we are completely satisfied Jesus writes that in doing God's work, he is filled, right? Like that is his food is doing God's work and obeying every, every word that comes from the mouth of God. Like, so he's telling us that like for us humans, for us creation, that we will not be satisfied. We will not be filled or fulfilled in anything that we do apart from God. God is just like, yeah, I've got me and that's all I need. I am God. Yeah. Fully separate from us. Fully. That um, oh, uh, that ties into sorry, 
that ties into kind of like his holiness, right? Because like he's completely set apart. He doesn't need us, and he, like he's apart from our sin, right? It's a little different, but it's the same. Mm. I don't even know if I believe that. All right, attribute at sorry, <laughs> attribute number two. His immutability, immuta- immutable, Felipe. Immutability. Immutability. God does not change. Can God change his mind? Does his purpose change? God can intervene in a moment to bring about his purpose, but he doesn't, or he also doesn't change. Oh, jeez. He also doesn't change, but can express his frustration in, uh, frustration or emotion. His immutability makes him trustworthy. Um, so I think this is like where it's important. This is an important one for us as Christians because I think the world is constantly changing. It's constantly shifting on like its ideas and stuff. And so when we grasp onto that, we're grasping at, we're like the little piggy who built his home out of straw, right? Yeah. And then when the wolf came, it Blew his house down. We're we're building our life on bad material. I could have used a Bible reference there. But <laughs> um, went with the little piggies. Um, no, but, like, we need to, like, I think we all, like, fundamentally understand that we need to build our lives on something solid, something that we know will not move and will not change its mind, right? Um, and I think we try to do that. We try to, like build our own artificial things that like we can hold on to. But ultimately those things fail because it is an in, incommunicable attribute of God that he is immutable, which means he is the only thing that cannot change. He is the only steadfast thing. And so when we build our life on that, that is where like our hope comes from. And that's where our consistency comes from. And so that's why we're able to build our life on what, God says and what God teaches us, right? Because of his immutability. Right. And it's important that we understand God, like this is an essential characteristic of God is that he is immutable. He does not change. Um, There is new theology, well, not new theology, but there is bad theology out there uh, called process theology. Um, And this is uh, more philosophical than biblical and it's wrong. Let me just start there. So process theology is a philosophical and theological position that God is always changing. And therefore, our knowledge of God must be progressing as we learn more about him. And it can never rest in any absolutes. Um, so like there in that case, there is no truth. Right. Like if if God is constantly changing, then uh, like at some point. If you were to go in the past, God might not have been God, mm. right? And if you go into the future, God is reactionary. God doesn't actually know what the future holds because God is changing as we are changing. Yeah. And that is not God, mm-hmm. right? So this this idea that God is uh, constantly changing as our idea and our understanding of him changes, that's nonsense, that's poo-poo, that's garbage, uh, horse crap to be strong. I, I'm going to have to put an explicit thing on this podcast, oh, on this episode. Sounds... Oh, yeah, it's not easily accessible. Uh, no. I don't know why I did that one. <laughs> <laughs> Bad joke. Um, oh, Stop playing with them. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we just got a new thing that our, yeah. Hey, I wonder if the sound will come through. It definitely will come through. Will it? Yeah, yeah, because I have this all the way up. Uh, Um, But anyway, if God does not change, that is a good thing. Uh, God being unchanging is what makes him God. And like you said, it's what allows us to build our lives on him because he's not some teenage girl that just moves on from one boyfriend to the next like Taylor Swift. He's not just like LeBron James is on a different team, whatever helps him win, or Russell Westbrook, I should say. Let's be honest. Uh, He's not like... Let's be Giannis. No, Giannis is faithful. He's been on the Bucks his whole career. Good, good job, Giannis. Uh, but like, 
You know, like he's not constantly making up his mind and reacting to things as they happen. God is God. God is faithful. God is unchanging. Isaiah says it like this, that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. No, that's not the verse I was trying to go with. Uh, there is a verse where he says, I'm the Lord. I do not change. And we did an episode. Does God change? It's Absolutely in Malachi, not. It? Yeah, it's in Malachi. It's not 3.6. Th- it might be 3.6. It, it does have a 6 in there. It might be 3.6. Yeah, Malachi 3, 6, for I, uh, the Lord, do not change. But that is what hopefully makes it's him. Not, hopefully you guys don't look it up and it's a weird verse no, about look, like David's loins or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or prostitutes. Because <laughs> uh, that's not what we're talking about. Uh, but anyway, his his immutability is what makes him trustworthy. Like, we don't want just a bag floating around in the wind being blown in every which direction. We want to know that God is God. And the fact that he does not change, he is constant, consistent, is what makes him God. Like, mm-hmm. he is truth, right? And if truth were wavering every five seconds, kind of like the CDC in there, you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wasn't going to be political. Wow. Uh, kind of like math and how oh. you had one plus one and then you get to high school and you learn about imaginary numbers. And it's like, I don't know what happened here, bro. Math is like quantifiably. It- Not when you say things like imaginary numbers. <laughs> I thought I knew math and then math changed. Or like how scientists were like, yo, Pluto's not a planet, but he kind of is again. And then now he's not again. He's a dwarf planet. What is Pluto? Anyway, so God does not change. It's a moon. Is it a moon? No. Oh. (laughs) Who knows? They might change it. NASA might change it again on me. Pluto was always a planet when I was a kid. Not anymore. Uh, Anyway, uh, God is eternal. That is something that we cannot share with God. God has no beginning and no end. And here's a here's an interesting. God sees all of time equally and vividly. But God has a different experience of time compared to us. Mm. That's interesting to think about because we will never understand eternity. Yeah. Right? Like we will never understand what it's like to like that uh ties into his ability to just be who he is and be trustworthy and he is forever unchanging yeah alpha and omega um i have a few thoughts about this and go on it's not a hundred percent like stop okay i know so it's not a hundred percent like this is exactly what we're talking about but i think maybe i can fit this in a little bit I think when talking about God's eternity and prepare in preparing for this episode, I kind of, I had a new revelation from God. He showed me this. Um, no, I'm kidding. Obviously <laughs> you guys can laugh. Um, but I think stop. Oh. <laughs> it's so annoying. Sorry. We got, you know, it's the new noises that we got in our new recording thing. No, but I think when talking about, like, God's eternity, right, I think it should put us uh, in our place, right? Because I see a lot of people, like, worried about almost the wrong things when it comes to, like, our end goal as Christians, right? Um, I think we talked about this in our Knowing God episode where the prime objective of uh, a Christian is to know God and understand him fully, right? That's the quote. Yep. Um, and so I think, like, that's our prime goal, but I think a lot of people, like, see the goal, like, see the reason as to why they're Christian as, oh, like, obviously, I want to get to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I want to get to heaven. Yeah. And I think it's, for me, it's such a funny way of thinking about things because, like, Jesus says over and over, like, Jesus isn't like, come on, guys, like, follow me and get to heaven, right? That's not, like, Jesus is never, like, enticing people and, like, bribing them to come over to his side because he's like, I got heaven on the other end, and it's just like, and if you don't, like, you're getting hell or whatever. Like, I think, I think when we think about God's eternity, we have to think about, like, our end goals because our end goal should really be to know God and also to bring the kingdom of heaven here, right? The kingdom of yeah, the kingdom of heaven. Um, because, like, I think 
we a lot of people focus so much on getting to heaven, and that's what they make their goals on, and so they become like lukewarm Christians because they don't really care and they don't have any real skin in the game. But when you set your eyes on bringing the kingdom of heaven here, you're able to fully commit yourself to God and fully commit yourself to knowing God and fully commit yourself to the expansion of the kingdom because what your heart truly desires and what God's heart truly desires is to have the kingdom of heaven here, which should be our end goal. And so I think when talking about the inter talking about the uh, God's eternity, like keep, keep that in mind because like in perspective, we only have 80 years out of that eternity out of forever. Right. So like, what are we get? what are we doing in those 80 years to bring the kingdom of heaven here? Yeah, that that's so good. Yeah, I cut in and out there. But um God is eternal. And lastly, for this episode, because this is definitely going into at least a part two, if not a part four. Uh God is omnipresent. God is not limited to space and time, because he's eternal. And God is holy everywhere, but he doesn't manifest himself the same everywhere. That's something, like, how do you wrap your brain around that? God is like the force. No. <laughs> and I'm going to strong know that because people, like, there's like a Jedi religion out there. Dude, for the I People saw that are super that. into Star Wars, and God is not like the force. Yeah, that's crazy. So if you focus really hard, God will Stop. move rocks for you. Anyway. Uh, Faith of a mustard seed. We can we can see this throughout the Bible, right? Like God is everywhere, but doesn't manifest Himself the same everywhere. Sometimes He shows up physically. If we read Second Chronicles chapter seven, uh, the presence of God, the glory of God, showed up in a, in a cloud in a way that knocked everybody to their feet at, at the temple when Solomon was offering sacrifices. If we look at even further back in Exodus and Deuteronomy and Numbers and what's the other one? Leviticus. Like God shows up in a cloud by day and fire by night. God shows up in so many different ways. And he is also everywhere at the same time. There's no place on this universe where God is not present. And there's no place in all of creation that God is not present. But at times he decides to show up in a way that people can actually see, touch, and feel. And it's crazy, but God is everywhere, always, at all times. He's always watching. Yeah, speaking of which, side tangent, like creepy childhood uh, songs. Uh, you remember that one? I'll be, be careful. You. Oh, no. no. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see, because the Father up above is watching over me. Like, God is some creepy stalker with a webcam. That is to a tune of a different song. What is the song? No, it's not. <laughs> it's also, if you're happy, you know, clap your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. It's tuned, but no, I've but never But be careful, that little hands, what you touch. It's stuff like that, and it's like, whoa. Ooh. Be careful, little... Yeah, I've, I thought I had lyrics, and I promise you, I've got nothing. I just said, "Be careful, little," and then brain fart. Anyway, uh, yeah, there are so many more attributes of God, and we're gonna go through all of them. Uh, some of them we share in common with God, like Rowan said at the beginning of the episode. Some of them we don't, and even though we share some of those attributes in common with God, when it's God's attributes, they're entirely different, right? Like because. We can be good, but God's goodness is a different kind of good. It's a godly, holy goodness. We can be kind, but God's kindness is so much better. We can be smart. God is infinitely more knowledgeable, right? Like there's there's so much that we uh, share in common with God, but that God is still on a different level. And then there's the things that make him God, like his omnipresence, the fact that he's eternal, the fact that he is immutable, the fact that he is independent and fully at one and satisfied in himself. Like, yeah, 
He is God. And we're going to talk good. about this. This is going to be some good theology for you, hopefully. Hopefully we do the, the hard work of putting this together right so that you understand it well. And if you have questions, message us, DM us. Uh, what else? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's the end of the episode. Wrong button. There it is. So, if you enjoyed this episode and like what you hear, consider sharing with your friends, family, uh, coworkers, and spouses. I hit the wrong button so many times on this episode. <laughs> um, but it adds a new layer of what we're doing. Yeah, totally. So, if you like us, well, share us. Oh, I really. That's a bad joke. I can't. Uh, if you like what you're doing, uh, for like what we're doing, share us. You can hit the share button from iTunes, from Spotify, from Audible, from TikTok, from Instagram, from Facebook. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on Anchor.fm. Uh, you can listen to us literally anywhere podcasts are available, I think. Except for whatever new device Kanye just came out with. We're not on that yet. Hit us up, Kanye. Just Or maybe don't. You're going through some stuff. Uh... Check out our website, TossingYourPodcast.com. You got to hurry up because I am. I'm hurrying up. Okay, peace. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs>